What's up? Uh, I'm back in the shop today. I am going to um, maybe do a little bit of a maybe build a little bit of a build along uh, with this guy. I want to turn this into a slingshot, and I want to show you guys. Um, I've carved a few really big oversized forks down uh, into a slingshot, but I um, I haven't done very much of the of the like designing it. I kind of just let it happen. So I start with a big chunky piece of wood like this, and then I start cutting it down and uh, try to eventually shape it with, you know, some tools, some rasp, some sanding, um, my belt sander, things like that. And then it ends up just making itself into something. And I'm going to actually try to make a design on this and see what that turns out like. So I haven't done this yet. I don't know if it's going to work out very well, but I am excited to start and, and excited to try. All right, so again, sorry for the mess. Um, you can see the other day we had cut the uh, figure eight descenders here. Hopefully you guys have seen that video already. Um, these are just the extra pieces. I actually saved these because I think that I'm going to um, cut them down and, or I think I'm gonna melt them down yeah, so I have a whole bunch of them in there. I think I'm going to melt these down and uh, turn them into another slingshot, hopefully. Um, we'll see. I, I don't actually know what I'm going to do with it yet, but anyway. Today we're working on this. Um, first step that you're going to have to do when you have a huge oversized natural like this, you have to strip all the bark off. It's really not an option because of how huge this is. It would just be so unbearably uncomfortable to shoot. Um, so we're gonna take the go ahead and take the bark off and see what we got see what we're working with underneath And there it is I think I can do, get a decent slingshot out of that um, made a horrible, horrible mess though. So I'm going to do a real quick vacuum job. All right. So I found one that's going to work and I'm going to put this, um, piece of paper up to the piece of wood and trace with the black marker that's right there all the way around it. And, uh, then I'm going to try to cut around there somehow, maybe with my jigsaw and we will hopefully be able to have a really rough shape, uh, cut out real thick. Okay, I think that'll work. Okay, I'm back. I had to move some stuff and get some coffee. So, um, I'll just keep, I'll just keep working. Okay, so I got it pretty well done up inside there. And again, the grain in that wood is going to be amazing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the width down. And I don't have a very good way to do this. So I've been debating on how exactly I want to proceed, and I really want that section of wood in there. And I think I can make it happen, because that's where all the dark parts are and everything. Just by cutting, like using this corner and this corner as templates and cutting it straight, straight down like that. Um... But I'm not sure. I am going to give it a go and think about it for a little while and I'll let you know what I come up with. Alright, so it's nice and smooth now. Still a few little bumps and whatnots here, but that'll all come off in the final sanding. Um, 
I also need to round all the edges because it's still pretty square. As you can see, my saw left a little bit of marks in there. Um, saws all left a little few marks down here, but right now I just want to trace the outline of the slingshot again and then try to take down just a little bit more material so that I can get a really good idea of what um, where I need to take material off before I start rounding everything and, and making it shootable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Then I'm going to take down some more material. And uh, yeah, we're, we're this close. We're this close. <clears throat> now one of the tricks is to get very close to the line without going over. Um, and just wearing down all that material on the outsides, but don't go over the line. Um, that gets tricky. So when you get to the point where you're almost done and you're ready to just sand it and finish it, you want to take all of the marker off, except where you still have a lot of material to take off. So I'm going to take a lot of more material off in that fork because I want to make it, you know, nice and deep and even. It's really crooked right here and it doesn't look right, but the rest of it is really starting to come into its and uh, I really like the way that this is coming out uh, so much better than I had planned and uh, man I love it so I'm just gonna keep shaping it up and then I'm going to take out what's left in here with the, with the rasp again um, even though that sucked and then uh, we'll be able to sand it down and finish it all right I got it shaped up this thing is absolutely beautiful I'm so happy with these markings. Um, I exposed a little bit of a void in here when I was fixing up the fork. Fork looks pretty good, but um, there was a void. So what I did was I just took some tight bond wood glue and I mixed it with some of the sawdust from this thing, which there's plenty of sawdust over there. <laughs> and um, I just put a big glob inside the void, spread it around a few times, wiped it in and out, uh, and Right now, we're just going to wait for it to... All right, here it is. I fixed the little gap with some wood glue, and I'm sanding it down right now. I've only got it sanded to 100 grit. I'm going to take it up to 220, and then I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so I sanded it down to 220 grit. This is what it looks like now. Um... We had a little bit of a soft spot on the back, and when I was putting in the band grooves, we tore up a little bit of that spot right there, but I think it's going to be okay because we're going to put some epoxy, two-part epoxy glue, over this whole thing, and I think I can just build up a little bit of a spot here using like maybe some toothpicks just to roll the epoxy on a little bit heavier right there um but it doesn't it, it's just this one spot so it's not really that bad the rest of it looks fantastic i'm really pleased with it but this is the best part right now we're going to use some grapeseed oil and we're going to oil this thing up and it's going to make the grain pop like crazy
gonna go ahead and just keep rubbing this oil in for a little bit and uh, I'll probably let it soak overnight so it can suck up a lot of the oil and I don't know if you can see this top part right here but every time I smear oil on there you can see the wood just soaking it up it almost looks like it's drying that's like crazy